Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We're ready for the event, Houston. Berlin, this is Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Termini, Präzision und Zeitplan genannt und in dem Moment habe ich gehört, dass wir arbeiten an der Schalte zur ISS und äh, gerade äh, kriege ich die Information, dass die Verbindung schon da ist. Deswegen möchte ich jetzt als allerersten den Commander, der vor 25 Jahren im Shuttle geflogen ist, zu mir auf die Bühne bitten, Henk Hartsfield und meine Herren, kommen Sie gleich dazu, Herr Staatssekretär und Klaus-Peter Wilsch. Sie drei werden jetzt diesen Live-Call in die ISS durchführen. Ich ich darf Ihnen dazu vielleicht die Handmikrofone geben. Commander Hartsfield, wir haben später sicher noch Gelegenheit, über die D1-Mission ein bisschen zu sprechen. Aber jetzt wollen wir natürlich die Zeit nutzen, diesen Bogen zu schließen von der Vergangenheit in die Gegenwart. Vielleicht, meine Herren, kommen Sie ein bisschen mehr zur Seite hier, dann können Sie auch auf die Leinwand sehen und äh, das Publikum kann auch sehen. Commander Hartsfield, Sie können jetzt die ISS rufen. Commander Hartsfield, you can call the ISS. You can call them. They... Station, this is Commander Hank Hartsfield of uh, D1 six, STS 61A mission. How do you hear me? Commander Hartsfield, we have you loud and clear aboard the International Space Station. Welcome aboard. And we also welcome you here to a special evening here in Berlin, where we're celebrating the 25th anniversary of the D-1 mission. In the audience, we have distinguished guests from the German parliament, industry, and science. Please let me introduce the people who will make this in-flight call together with me. First of all, our host and member of the German par parliament and chairman of the aviation and space group of the German parliament, Mr. Klaus Peter Wilsch and also the coordinator for air and space, Mr. P Peter Hintze. Hi, this is um, Member of Parliament, Klaus Peter Wilsch. Welcome to Berlin, crew of Expedition 25 and to our celebration of the uh, 25th anniversary of the D1 mission. We are really excited to be able to talk to you uh, and with you and we would, first of all, naturally know where is your current position. It's a real pleasure to join you. And uh, we're currently uh, flying over Japan, and we're on a descending node uh, coming out over the Pacific Ocean, uh, traveling at uh, eight kilometers per second. So pretty quickly, uh, we orbit the Earth once every 90 minutes. It's great to join you today. Thank you. I, I now have the honor and pleasure to hand over to a very special guest of our parliamentarian group uh, for this night, it's the State Secretary in the Ministry of Economics and Technology of the Federal Republic of Germany, Mr. Peter Hinze. Please. This is Peter Hinze. We in Germany are very proud of the ISS. It's humanity's greatest ever technology project. My question to you in the ISS, what are the main experiments you are currently working on? And how is the Columbus Control Center in Oberpfaffenhofen supporting you? Well, uh, welcome aboard uh, the space station. We're actually in the Columbus module, which, is a, uh, which was built uh, there in Bremen and uh, by the sharp engineers there. Uh, we also uh, do much of our training over in the European Astronaut Center in Cologne, uh, near Cologne. And uh, we also have a control team, a mission control team in Oberpfaffenhofen uh, that helps us uh, on a daily basis, actually many, many times a day, as we operate the different, the varied experiments here in the Columbus module and the other, the other uh, laboratories on board. As far as the types of experiments we're doing, we have such a wide range of experiments on board the station right now, it's hard to cover all of them. We have experiments in just about every field of science, from the biological sciences to the material sciences to the uh, uh, physical sciences. So um, I guess some of the ones that come to mind right off, I this week was working on a, an experiment with plants for the Japanese. Um, 
We've had uh, capillary flow experiments looking at how fluids move in space. We've got uh, experiments uh, that were, were test subjects using our bodies to understand how they adapt in space. Um, so just a whole wide range of things going on up here on the space station. Thank you so much. Uh, one last question. The German government is in favor of an extension of the lifetime of ISS. What benefits would an extension of the lifetime of the ISS bring for Europe? You're really just coming onto the threshold of the uh, of full utilization of this space station as an orbiting laboratory. And uh, here the, in the Columbus module and the other laboratories on board, we're just now coming up to full operation. And it's very, very exciting to see uh, the amount of activity, the amount of excitement in the area of science, uh, the area of, of uh, education, bringing the science back to Earth, to our children, and to our scientists. And um, I think it's going to be amazing what we see over the next several years. And it's due uh, in large part to the pioneers that are there, uh, Commander Hartfield, Hartsfield and his crew, who uh, pioneered some of the early space laboratories. And now we're really seeing it come to fruition where we'll see uh, this payback for our investment of our technology, of our engineering skills, and of our scientists uh, that we put into the uh, into the space station now. I think we're going to uh, begin to start to see um, return in the areas of medicine, uh, breakthroughs in the area of medicine, in the area of agriculture, as we uh, as we uh, take a look at um, at the. Uh, experiments that uh, Dr. Walker was talking about uh, in, in the area of uh, growing crops and uh, taking care of our, our land and things like this. So I think it's going to be a very, very exciting future for our children and uh, for future crews of the space station. This is, uh, um, this is MP Wilch again. Um, you know, we're in Berlin where the front line between East and West Germany was. So it's a great experience for us to have you talking uh, to us and to our international guests down here, you up there, uh, international crew. Space has become truly an international business. So, um, and for me, the ISS is quite a symbol for that. What do you, what would you say on that? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, one of the greatest examples of international cooperation we've had in, um, you know, in the history of our planet. Um, you know, this uh, facility is an amazing facility. It's uh, incredibly complicated uh, to build. It uses different technologies that are made in different um, different countries um, with, uh, you know, different philosophies, engineering philosophies, and uh, the fact that we've been able to put it together in orbit um, in a vacuum while flying around the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour is, I think, an amazing feat. And, uh, you know, everyone that is involved in this program, from the crew members, uh, you know, and everyone else that, um, you know, all the engineers and scientists and designers and all the support people should be very, very proud of the uh, this, uh, you know, amazing uh, facility we've built. Uh, besides the three of us here, there are also three Russian crew members on board. Um, and soon, uh, in the next uh, probably about six weeks, we're going to have a uh, European astronaut. Um, that, uh, you know, rounds out the uh, crew of Expedition 26. This is MP Wilch again. Germany has provided together with uh, ESA major contributions to the ISS. We have a lot of people here around in our auditorium who uh, really uh, took important parts uh, on this work. What is the role of uh, polit politics? What are your expectations towards politics? Um, for the implementation, realization and, uh, uh, of uh, such a project like Columbus or the ISS? Well, clearly, um, flying in space and uh, doing it safely and doing it in the manner that we've chosen is, uh, you know, very, can be expensive. And there are, uh, you know, fiscal realities to, to this program. So, Politics clearly uh, plays a part, and, uh, you know, I think it's our job to be able to answer these questions, but, uh, you know, in general, um, 
you know, our management and, uh, you know, leadership and governments um, answer the questions of, of politics and, you know, specifically with regards to financing. So, uh, you know, it's something we're aware of, but, uh, you know, to have a specific answers is, uh, you know, somewhat difficult for me. Hey, Wales, uh, this is Hank Hartsfield again. Uh, I have a question. It looks like everything goes real smooth now in, face, in the, your vehicle. Uh, it's great to see how well it goes. For us, space inside the space lab was uh, somewhat limited. You're better off today, aren't you? How, how is it up there on a long-duration mission? Uh, uh, Commander Hartsfield, I can't, I can't imagine how you did it with such a small laboratory, but um, it is very, very spacious. And of course, uh, because we don't have, well, we have microgravity up here, you can use the ceiling or the floor or, or the walls. And we have experiments that are, that are covering each of the four quadrants. We actually have over 130 experiments going on right now in the space station. And it's just a tremendous laboratory and uh, very, very spacious. And um, and we have uh, we have four laboratories. Of course, we have uh, the uh, the contribution uh, by the uh, European Space Agency is uh, we're sit, uh, standing in here today in the Columbus module. We also have the uh, Japanese experiment module, the, the GEM module that we have tremendous number of experiments in, and the U.S. laboratory. And then we also have our Russian partners uh, doing uh, uh, experiments as, in, as well in the Russian segment. So it's a it's a tremendous uh, place. It's it's got a tremendous amount of volume, and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's actually fairly easy to get lost in here. This is Sam Pivilch again talking. We are, you know, you heard we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of D1. Um, and what, in your opinion, are the future challenges? What do you think? Where will we be in 25 years? Twenty-five years that we'll be uh, we'll be uh, learning from the things the things that we've learned here that we will have had breakthroughs uh, on in science on our planet, and I hope to be watching our some of our children walking on the surface of Mars. Okay, I thank you very much. So far, I have I, I just heard we have to finish now. Um, thank you the crew of Expedition 25 for sharing your precious time with us. On behalf of the Aviation and Space Group in the Deutsche Bundestag, um, I can tell you that we are happy that the operation of ISS has been extended until 2020. I wish you all the best and a successful mission and sending best wishes from the audience as well. God's sake for all of you. We really appreciate you joining us today aboard the International Space Station, and a, thank, a big thank you to all of our partners there in Germany. Uh, obviously, to our uh, to our sharp engineers in Bremen who uh, built our uh, the module that we're in now. All of our scientists, our control team, and over Pfaffenhofen. Our, uh, our training teams in the, uh, near Cologne, uh, the DLR, who's been so instrumental in, uh, in everything that w that's occurring up here in space now. We really, really appreciate it. It's a, it's a total team effort, and, uh, and your effort uh, and sacrifice is not lost on us, and we so deeply appreciate uh, uh, being part of your team. Herzlichen Dank. Station. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you.